Morning, Trainiacs. It is a full-on mid-season rest week. No working out this week. So I just came from a delightful coffee with the morning cycling group after they rode. Nice to drink coffee without the lingering taste of throw up and lactic acid in my throat. Is this what normal people do? So today we are gonna talk about how to structure a season, a week, and a workout, including rest, so you get fast and you stay healthy. So, Trainiacs, this should be fairly short and sweet because I'm not training this week. There isn't a whole ton to talk about. The first type of rest that you need to work on is outright structured downtime rest. Over the course of a year, your body needs time to like just recover. What we do is so repetitive over the course of say a long run, we might be taking upwards of 15 to 20,000 steps. We might be taking about 50,000 pedal strokes. We might be taking about 10,000 arm strokes. And even if we have really, really good form and our body is really, really strong, just that amount of repetition for all of these movements is very corrosive on the body. It's very tough. So we need to take some downtime mandated throughout the course of a year where it's not like, well, you know, maybe think about taking this off. No, structured rest. In your case, what is probably about appropriate is after your very last race of the year, take an off season of about four to six weeks. And in this time, you can run, you can ride, you can swim, but keep the intensity way, way, way down. Go play some basketball with friends. If you used to be a golfer, go golfing. If you've ignored your loved ones from a season of very intense training, go for a hike, something like that, something that is not training. This is gonna give your body a break, it's gonna give your mind a break, and you're gonna get antsy again to start training because we want to Keep that motivation nice and high year after year. The second time that you wanna take structured rest annually is around a mid-season break. That's what I'm in right now. If the training block of your race season is longer than about five months, and that's not like start of the very first race to the end of the last race, this is start of your race period of the year to the end of your last race is about five months, somewhere in the middle should take about a week off. Same sort of thing. You want to be rested, you want to be rejuvenated, and you want to be able to build a really big block of training up to that last race of the year. If you're just going for five, six, seven months in a row, you're going to get mentally fatigued, you're going to get physically fatigued. Personally, myself, my race season last year basically lasted nine months. I more or less didn't have a break throughout the entire season. I was injured by the end of it, and I got sick four or five times over the winter. Now let's talk about creating your weekly plan and incorporating rest in that. A lot of people ask why I don't take an outright rest day. Well, I don't take an outright down day that I've scheduled into a week because lower intensity workouts, and we're talking like a half hour to 60 minute bike at 100 watts. This is like so low intensity that it's not challenging at all. This is a 60 minute swim right now, a whole bunch with fins, nothing over about 75% intensity. That's not gonna take a lot out of me, but what it's gonna do is it's going to create blood flow and we need blood flow to repair our body. So what I do is Monday and Friday, I schedule these lower intensity days to A, recover from the weekend and B, prepare myself for the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday workouts and vice versa. Friday is also recovering from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and preparing myself for a big hard week. That down day also prepares me so that during those intense, really purposeful Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday workouts, or the really long 
Saturday, Sunday workouts, I can perform those a lot better because I'm not tired from the Monday and Friday workouts. So it makes those harder workouts much harder, which is then going to allow me to have a bigger training effect because I'm going to be able to push more and my body's going to adapt to that bigger push. Next thing, rest within a workout. For really, really intense sprints, things like that, if you're doing, say, 15 to 30 second max efforts, you want at least the exact same amount of time to recover or even more, depending on the season. That, this could be a whole nother video. You've got to have your workouts designed for recovery so that when you do have those interval periods, you can go really hard and again, get that training effect that you want. If you're just doing like a 60 minute steady workout, you're gonna only be able to work out at something like 60 to 70% of your maximum effort, which is a gray zone, and it doesn't really offer intense enough training effect to get faster from it, but it's also not a low enough training effect to recover from it. So you don't really get any benefit. Final thing, when do outright rest days come? If you've done an off season properly, if you've recovered with a mid season break, if you've structured your weeks so that you're recovering as you're getting faster, if you go two weeks of hard week, one week of rest so that you can recover and just continue a gradual increase, you shouldn't have to have too many rest days. Like outright rest, I reserve for days when I'm traveling, I reserve them for days when I get sick, I reserve them for days where for one reason or another, maybe the workout was extremely intense in really high winds or really hot weather and I screwed up my nutrition or it was extremely cold for a run and it took more out of me than we were intending and I'm feeling really down, then I'll take an outright rest day. But in those cases, you're doing it in an unplanned scenario. You're doing it as a reaction to how your body's feeling as opposed to just saying, well, I need one rest day a week that is completely off. You don't know that. If you are at the point of training really regularly, five, six, seven days a week, you can save those outright rest days for the odd time, not the always time. Ooh, I like the sound. So there you go, Trainiacs. All of this is going to be included in the Team Trainiac training platform, so you'll know exactly how to implement it, and all the workouts will include this. You'll have prompts for when and how to rest. So if you aren't already subscribed and you want to make sure you don't miss info about the Team Trainiac training platform, hit that subscribe button below. If you're already subscribed, you're awesome. That's all.